Praxis Prepper. Hey everybody, this is Praxis and I've got really good news for you. Collectively, as a civilization, we are all about to embark on a journey together and the journey is going to be into a land where people are going to pretend that the pandemic situation doesn't exist anymore. States all over the United States are clamoring they want to open up. Countries all want to open back up. People have kind of uh, either gotten used to the idea of thousands and thousands of people dying from COVID-19 every day, or they want to pretend that it's not happening at all. But whatever route people are using to get to where we are headed at the moment, people are headed in the direction of wanting to go back to normal. I think people have gotten to a point where, you know, it's nice to have your parents around and all, but seriously, let's get back to the mall. Now, why is that good news for all the rest of us? Well. It's not at all, actually. It's kind of terrible uh, because we've got two very negative roads ahead of us. One is pretending that the virus doesn't exist and having a lot of deaths uh, occur as a result of that and maybe massive economic collapse as a result of that. And the other road is towards massive economic collapse if we don't open back up uh, because you know, a society just can't function if it's closed indefinitely. So we've got these two negative roads in front of us. How is that good news? Well, the good news is that this is discretionary. You don't have to be one of the people that's pretending that everything is totally fine. And in this lull between people uh, you know, moving from this sort of isolation lifestyle that people have been living in and wanting to move back to what they feel is normal, there's going to be a lag in the consequences of that. That's going to be a lull for the rest of us. And we all have an excellent opportunity right now to do any kind of last minute preparations that you would like to do. If you are new to prepping, and I know a lot of people are new to the idea of wanting to be prepping and prepared, and a lot of the way that people were executing that idea of preparedness is by trying to get ready for things after they actually happen, which is not being prepared at all, it's sort of the opposite. But right now, we are looking into the future, we can see where this is going. I mean, I think all rational people can see where this is going. The disease hasn't gone anywhere. We haven't had enough infection in our population to get anywhere close to the idea of a herd immunity. We do not have a vaccine. And even if you know, we had a lot of people that had contracted it, I mean, in the United States, one out of some, somewhere around like one out of 300 or maybe higher than that, because we're not doing a lot of testing here. Uh, you know, we're nowhere near close to that, like kind of 80 percent threshold where it's actually going to be acting as a firewall to protect us. So when we get the next wave of this virus, which might be coming in the next month, maybe the next two months, something along those lines, uh, we are essentially going to be starting from the same place where we were before. There's no extra immunity. We have a little bit of extra um, experience with how to deal with the situation, but essentially we're going to be starting over from scratch. We're all just going to be going back to square one, but you don't have to. You can get yourself into a better position for the next time this happens than you were at the beginning of this. And that involves getting yourself supplies, uh, you know, getting yourself knowledge. I'm here down in my pantry. There was a grocery store that uh, I would frequent all the time. And when this started, uh, uh, the situation happened, they stopped doing all the bulk orders. I always love doing bulk orders, as you maybe, <laughs> maybe can tell around me. It's a great way of getting a lot of food, uh, you know, already packed in boxes for you. So you don't have to have like, you know, like all these jars that are all like rattling around in your car, in the back of your car. It's really easy to just grab things in a box, bring them into your car. It's cheaper. You usually save money when you buy things in bulk and you always have the stuff if you need it. That grocery store that stopped doing that has just restarted that policy and boy did I put in a huge order that we're going to be picking up over the next week. You have that same opportunity right now. We are about to see this lull. Everybody, not everybody, many people are going to be going back to work. They're going to start lubricating the uh, wheels in our society. It's going to be functioning seemingly fine for a little bit. And this is your opportunity if you want to correct what you might have thought were mistakes, errors over, you know, last couple of years. Again, a lot of new people here to prepping. Uh, a lot of people were saying, you know, I wish I had started this sooner. You know, what can I do? This is your chance. Now, prepping isn't about trying to get ready for something that happened yesterday. Prepping is using your brain, maybe taking a little bit of a mental leap, maybe taking a little bit of a risk. There's a chance that, who knows, uh, SARS-CoV-2 could mutate. It's always mutating slowly uh, is what the scientists are suggesting. It's always mutating. Maybe it will generally mutate into something that's less uh, deadly to people. It, viruses really don't have any incentive to try to kill people. In fact, the, the most effective virus is the one that spreads through a population with absolutely no symptoms and just 
infects everyone, spreads itself all over the place without harming anyone because when it harms people, people try to stop it. If it doesn't harm anybody, nobody really cares and you can just do what it wants. So the virus doesn't have any, like even if it had, I know it doesn't have a brain, but if it had a brain, it would have no incentive for wanting to harm us. They just randomly uh, evolve, randomly mutate, and you know, there's a, a total chance that it could mutate into something that's less dangerous to us and that could be the case. But the downside of being prepared is None, really, because if you're buying food, you're going to need anyway. If you're buying it in bulk, you're going to be saving money. So the downside is that you're saving money and all the other types of things you might want to have for the ability to stay at home, to shelter in place. Those are useful for so many sorts of different circumstances, you know, hurricanes, flash floods, wildfires, all sorts of different circumstances can require a need on your part to either shelter in place or to be able to evacuate or move to someplace else. Getting ready for one type of emergency very frequently prepares you for all sorts of other emergencies, and that is just an improvement of your quality of life. So very good news. A lot of people are about to try to pretend that everything's back to normal, and you can take advantage of that fact right now by going out and getting yourself a little bit more prepared for when we all collectively realize that it actually didn't go away. That's it. Thanks for watching. This episode is brought to you in part by Burning Hearth Homestead, a nonprofit that aims to provide seeds, live plants, and education to the community, both local and extended. Plant seeds, plant knowledge, plant the future. If you'd like to thank them for supporting this channel or find out more about what they do, go to burninghearthhomestead.org. Please subscribe and tune in every Friday at 4.30 New York time for a new video. And if you'd like to support this channel, you can do so both through Patreon or PayPal.